Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch. Uh, I was at Jewelry Works here in Gainesville, Florida. As you guys know, they, they lend in a bunch of watches to the channel for us to have a look at. And uh, I came across this Ebel watch and it sparked an interesting topic in my mind. So there are plenty of different watch groups and some are your, you know, kind of tried and true, tested, you know, swatch group it is very much uh, kind of handles the middle of the market, you know, from Hamilton to Tissot and Mido and Certina. You know, they, they certainly go upwards with Omega and Breguet and Blancpain and some <clears throat> brands with some really great heritage. But there's other groups that kind of have these outlier brands, right? So, so like Richemont is kind of an upper echelon brand or, or group to me. You know, they have Cartier and Vacheron Constantin and, and, and Piaget and IWC and JLC and all these big brands. And they have Bama Mercier. And they kind of get lost in the shuffle. I, I think they're under underrated. You know, the, the group's DNA finds its way into most watches. And uh, Richemont is very synonymous with quality in my eyes. Um, but then you also have groups like Fossil Group who have terrible brands. And I don't mean to offend you, but, but Relic and DKNY and Marc Jacob and Armani Express and Skagen, they're just terrible brands. But they also have Zodiac. If you haven't seen a Zodiac Seawolf, look one up or all of them up. They are phenomenal dive watches. Great heritage, uh, fantastic design, Swiss movements. It's just, you, know, you, you can't judge a, a brand by its group uh, but you do need to be cautious. And Movado Group is another one that I have very little respect for. You know, Coach and Tommy Hilfiger and, and Concord and ESQ. Uh, I don't like any of the brands. Uh, I don't think they put out a quality product. I think they overcharge for marketing and, and branding. But Ebel is a little different. They specialize in women's watches. The, the women's watches they do are actually very beautiful. Uh, they do a lot of manufacturer caliber, so they're, they're making their own movements. Um, I do believe some of it's outsourced, uh, but I, to be honest, uh, I've had a hard time tracking up specific details on, on very many of their calibers. But I was in taking a look at it. I thought you guys would, would enjoy uh, kind of like having a look. It, it's an oddball of a watch. It's a little bit big, but it's just a reminder that you know, you, you can't necessarily judge a, a book by its cover. Uh, I've certainly seen uh, worse watches command a, a much higher premium. So what really drew me in on the watch was the detail and the finish. Uh, as you can see, the indices are beautifully finished. Uh, there is an anti-reflective coating on both sides of its sapphire crystal. And the dial plays beautifully. It, it's, it's very simple and well executed while boasting some complication and some variation of finish. Uh, I love the waffling that is in the center of the day wheel as well as within the power reserve. I think it offers a lot of interest but it stays very uniform so it doesn't come off uh, goofy or, or immature. I think it really fits the design of the watch. Uh, your date uh, arm here on the right I think another beautiful addition helps to balance the dial and really present, I, I feel, a more complicated view than necessarily what it's providing, uh, but it does it in a very classic fashion. And uh, I'm a big fan, and I think you know, it, it really has a, a premium look. So incredibly attractive dial aside, uh, you'll probably notice that there are a few screws on the front of the watch uh, along this smooth bezel. Uh, that's because it, it's a solid case. So there's no case back to be removed. Uh, if the watch needs repair or to be serviced, uh, the crown is removed and things are, are pulled out through the front of the watch. Uh, I think it offers quite a bit of, of intrigue and, and presents something new. Uh, Ebel's been doing this hexagon shape for quite some time. Uh, it's very unique to them and uh, I think incredibly comfortable as you can imagine. On your skin there, there's no transitions uh, to really speak of uh, so while it is a larger piece uh, I think it 
it all just kind of works in, it, in its own kind of kitschy way. Uh, the strap is incredibly integrated. Uh, you'll either want to have a replacement uh, or just make sure you're, you're taking great care of this. Um, it's a genuine alligator. It's got a fantastic clasp. Uh, but it is, as, as you can see, uh, screwed in. Um, there's a, a plate in here uh, as it presses up perfectly against the case. Uh, finding something that, that's going to hold the same uh, hole placements uh, but not be a factory strap uh, I think is going to be quite tricky. So it being a 50 meter watch and a true dress watch, it's not going to take a whole bunch of damage. So you shouldn't have to worry too much. Uh, just Take note, you know, you, you'll want to provide some, some oils or, or lotions to your leather and really make sure you're taking good care of it. So here it is on my seven and a third inch wrist. Uh, as you can see, it, it would probably be easy to get overwhelming on a, a more slender wrist. Uh, I'm typically not a fan of, of integrated straps uh, simply because my wrist is pretty flat on top and wide. Um, that said, the, the diameter of the watch provides enough room that it, this one is actually incredibly comfortable. But it brought up a, a secondary topic. So I, I certainly want to touch on, on brands and their parent companies, but I also want to talk about dealing with somebody local. I hopped on Chrono24, I wanted to be able to quote what these go for now, because the original retail was you know, around $5,000, and that's just, it's ridiculous. It's a beautiful watch, very well put together. $5,000, we're talking about competing with a, a Speedmaster, it's not close. But, Chrono24 found them $3,500, bucks, and even that just seems like too much. Especially given the brand, this should be a budget type watch. So talking to David, and you know, he's asking $1,000. I'm not trying to sell you the watch, but it just proves a point. This watch with its premium feel, unique design, is $1,000. I think it's a great offering for the price. And thinking about looking online for one. Like if the, if the aesthetic appealed to you and you wanted to scour the internet and try to find one, people are going to be asking $3,000. And having someone local that knows the market, knows what they're getting into, knows the brand, isn't going to try to outprice anybody, it's just going to get a good deal on a watch and pass it along, it's just hard to find. And you're definitely, definitely going to have a hard time finding that online. If you guys need anything Seiko or anything uh, used luxury, uh, I have David's contact information in there at Jewelry Works. If not, don't worry about it. He, he does a great job helping me provide content for the channel, and I hope you guys enjoy it. If you're not already, go ahead and click subscribe. Uh, I'll throw a couple of videos up on the other side. Have a look. Let us know what you like, what you don't, and what you want to see. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.